Structural geology is looking how rocks will deform under stresses. So in this video, we're going to look at one of the, the types of deformation, permanent deformation, which is brittle. And in brittle deformation, we're typically looking at shallow depths from the surface down to about 12 kilometers. And the way the rock or material behaves is it shatters, kind of like if you ever hit a window with a rock or something and the window shatters, the rocks are doing the same thing. So instead of changing their shape, they're going to fracture. And when those fractures have motion along them, we call that a fault. So what we're going to look at are the different varieties of faults and the different types of slip that you could see out in nature. So the first thing we're going to do is start with dip slip. And looking at our block, we have the hanging wall and foot wall. You can see the hanging wall is the portion of the block above the fault, whereas the foot wall is the portion below the fault. And in dip slip, we see vertical motion along the fault. The first one that we are going to look at and draw is called a normal fault. So if I were to hold this in the same orientation as our picture, we again have the hanging wall and the foot wall like this. And it's called a normal fault because what does gravity want to do to the hanging wall? It wants to pull it down the foot wall. And when that happens, we look at it as normal, so we call it a normal fault. So again, dip slip, we can see our motion is vertical along the fault surface, and we're left with an offset like this. So what we are going to do is we are going to make the drawing from our undeformed block of what it would look like after normal fault motion. Again, drawing blocks is a good skill to have for geology because it's a very visual sort of science. So the foot wall, the hanging wall, we are left with an image that looks like this. The hanging wall has slid down the foot wall. And the important thing to think about is what stress would allow that kind of motion. So if I take our blocks again, and I have them like this, what would allow, let's flip them around, what would allow the hanging wall to move down the foot wall. Think if I push my two hands on the side together, what's going to happen? It's going to move up the fault surface. So what do I have to do to get that motion of a normal fault? I have to pull my hands apart, and as I do that, the normal fault motion takes place. So the stress we're looking at in a normal fault is tensional. Stress pulling out to the sides. The next dip slip, or the other dip slip, is a reverse fault, and it's the exact opposite of what we saw in the normal fault. This time the hanging wall is going to go up the foot wall, and we are left with something that will look similar to my drawing here. This time the hanging wall has been pushed up the foot wall, and again from our demonstration earlier, we know that the stress, in this case, must be compression. So this is dip slip, vertical motion along the fault. The next type we have is strike slip. Now in strike slip, we're looking at lateral motion, so instead of the hanging wall or foot wall moving up and down, now they're moving horizontally. So in order to have that make sense, we have this, dip slip moving up and down, strike slip moving laterally to the side, back and forth. Now they're kind of counterintuitive 
when you look at the name. When you look at the name, you think left lateral means motion to the left. So if you were standing on the block looking at the fault, you would think the hanging wall is moving to the left, which would be back into the perspective image, and that the foot wall would be moving to the left, which is out in this perspective image. This, however, is incorrect, because what left lateral means is after the motion occurs, if we look across the fault, everything on the other block will be to our left. So to have this make sense, we have our two blocks. I'm going to tip them so we can see the map view. And for us, imagine you're standing here looking across the fault. And what you need to have happen for left lateral is that. When you look across the fault, everything is displaced to your left. So the blocks are actually moving what would be right if you were facing the fault on each of them to get left lateral motion offset. So let's go ahead and put our left lateral drawing in. I like to start with what is in front because it makes it easier for me. Because I am not a very good artist. As you can see, I have to stop talking while I'm drawing. But we would be left with something like this, where the hanging wall has moved so that everything on the foot wall is to the left when looking at the fault. Right lateral is the exact opposite. The hanging wall comes forward in our perspective image. Again, drawing, I have to go silent so I can think of what I'm trying to do here. Didn't turn out as well because I can't draw that great. But here you can see what would be left after a right lateral sort of motion. Our last type of slip that we are going to look at in this video is oblique slip. Oblique slip is a combination of dip and strike slip. So again we have our original undeformed block and we are going to try to draw normal plus left lateral fault motion. So first thing normal tells us that the hanging wall is going to move down the foot wall. The second thing left lateral tells us that the hanging wall is going to push into the perspective image compared to the foot wall. So we have to have the hanging wall slide down and move in to get that kind of motion. So, set it up so it's going to look the same for you. We need normal sliding down plus left lateral. So we need something that is going to wind up looking like that. The hanging wall has slid down and back into the perspective image. So if we were to draw that, again I'm thinking as I'm drawing, so I apologize for the silence in the video. We would end up with something that looks like that in the end. Now, truth be told, we are using simplified cases of blocks, which in geology you don't often get perfect square sorts of shapes, so it's more complicated when you go outside and are looking at these in rocks. And additionally, we are looking at faults that are linear, or they are straight lines. In reality, most faults and fault systems are curved. So we have a sort of rotational component to the slip that we're not seeing 
in our simplified models. But these slips and drawing these are a great way to begin to understand faults and brittle deformation uh, that you will apply in a structural geology lab in an intro physical geology course.